So in this video, we'll be looking at percentage change. So with percentage change, so this is where you know the original amount, you know the final amount, but you wish to work out the percentage increase or percentage decrease, aka a, the percentage change. So if we relate this to our previous videos, so with our previous videos, we've got the old price or the old amount, we've got the new price or new amount, and in this particular case, and then we've obviously got the percentage which goes from one to the other. Now in this particular case, we know what the old price is, we know what the new price is, but we don't know what the percentage change is gonna be. And that's what this topic is about. Now, although I've labeled this as percentage four, it might be a case of where you may, you may learn this particular topic or the area of percentages in a different order. You may have done it before reverse percentages. You may even done it um, before percentage increase, decrease. Highly unlikely, but you never know. So. With regards to percentage change, now if you look in any revision guide or any other websites or any other tutorials, they may show you two different formulas, one to work out percentage increase, another to work out percentage decrease. Now personally, what's better than learning two formulas is only learning how to learn one formula. Now with this, by only learning one formula, there is an element of you needing common sense. So you need to be able to recognize when there is gonna be a percentage increase or a percentage decrease. Now, the easiest way, and again, it is pretty common sense with regards to this. So if the price or the amount goes up, so if the amount increases, then it's gonna equal a percentage increase. If the price decreases or the amount, it doesn't necessarily have to be the uh, price decreases, then that there is gonna be a percentage decrease. Now, the formula which obviously I would definitely make note of is this. Now, obviously when you have got fractions and multiples in there, it doesn't really matter what order you do it in, but certainly what you wanna do is work out these two. Now, the difference between the two numbers is basically the original minus the um, new price or the new amount. But again, the problem with this is that you could end up with a negative value. So for example, if the new amount, so if there's been a percentage increase, then the new amount will be a larger number than the original. So you might find there is a negative number, which is why in this particular formula that I've written, I strongly would highlight the word difference. And you always wanna kind of make sure that you're doing, not oh, crossing that formula there, let's get rid of that. And that will disappear, is making sure that you work out the difference by doing the biggest takeaway the smallest. The next one is working out the original amount. And again, that's really, really important that you're able to make sure you pick the right number. Because obviously you're gonna have two numbers to decide, you need to decide which one is the original amount. So be careful in how a question is worded. Sometimes the first number will be the original amount. Sometimes it will be the second number that is the original amount. It all depends on the wording of a question. So let's have a look at some questions to start off with where we are using that formula. So with regards to uh, the first question, I'll try and colour code these just to make sure that you know which question I'm actually doing because I'm not actually numbered. Let's just number this number one. So with number one, what we want to do is work out the difference first. So the difference, and again, you don't need to set your work out exactly how I'm doing it. Obviously, I'm just trying to make it easier for you to work out. So to work out the difference, what we need to do is do 65 minus 16. So 65 minus 16 gives us 49. And then this is where we now use the formula. So the formula is gonna be the difference, which is 49, divided by the original amount, which is 16, and we're gonna times that by 100. Now straight away, I know that as the numbers are increasing, so going from 16 to 65, this is gonna be a percentage increase. So 49 divided by 16, multiplied by 100, and again, we're multiplying by 100 because we wanted to work out the um, percentage and it's actually increased by 306.25 percent and again don't be put off because as you can see that from the original to the new amount it has somewhat trebled now for number two so let's get a different color pen and let's get rid of that blue so again using the color now looking at this we're going the original amount has started at 340 and it's gone down um, to 160 so here what we've got is a percentage decrease now, one thing you might want to write, which I've forgotten, which can easily be done, as I've proven, is to write down increase there. 
So for number two, we're looking at decrease. So again, work out the difference first. And again, try and forget any negatives you might have on there. So we've got 340, take away 160, and it equals 180. And then so we're going to do 180 divided by the original amount, which is 340. Uh, and we're going to multiply that by 100. So 180 divided by 340 gives us 52.94. And then it carries on percent, so it'll be 52.9% decrease to one decimal place. And again, as we've rounded it up, it's always worth making sure that you're quoting what you're rounding up to. So moving on to number three, so let's go for green this time. So again, we're working out the difference between the two numbers. So the difference is going to be 45 minus 34, which is 11. So we're going to do 11 divided by 45 times by 100. And so we've got 11 divided by 45 gives us an answer of 24.4 recurring, which gives us 24.4%. And again, we're looking at a decrease because the numbers have gone down and that's one to one decimal place. So moving on to uh, number four, so again, we're looking at percentage increase because the number the number has gone up from the original amount. So with number four, we're working out the difference. So we're going to do three nine two five minus one three three four. So three nine two three take away one three three four gives us a difference of two five eight nine. So we're going to do two five eight nine over. 1334 times that by 100 and we're going to get 194.07 and that continues and it's going to be 194.1% and it's going to be an increase and there we go so moving on to our next set of examples so here we're looking at the value of a car. So the value of a car decreases from 13,499 to 8,995 and work out the percentage change. Now, sometimes a question might say work out the percentage decrease, which is absolutely fine. Sometimes it might say change. Now, typically if the word, if it says change, they'll be expecting you to include the word decrease in your answer. So the first thing you want to do is first establish which is your original and which is your final amount. So this is my original and this is the final amount. So what I want to do first is work out the difference. So the difference is going to be 13499 minus 8995. And again, straight onto the calculator. So 13499 minus 8995 gives me 4. Five zero four, and then now just plugging this into the formula, we get four five zero oh, four divided by thirteen forty nine um, forty uh, thirteen four hundred ninety nine times that by one hundred, and if I type that in now, we get an answer of thirty three point three six five, and that goes on. So round this up, we get thirty three point four percent decrease now as I said this bit here you can do in your head it's not really essential for you to write this down uh, you could just leave it on your calculator however one thing I would definitely recommend and what they'll be expecting in an exam is you including this as you're working out so here you've got your working out so your difference is calculated there you divide it by the correct uh, original amount multiplying by 100 and then you might get marks for your rounder which again uh, I've forgotten to write the fact that we've rounded this up to one decimal place. And like I said, it's always good practice for you to write down the number that you can see on your calculator, but you don't need to go crazy. You can just simply just write a few dashes, write a few digits after a decimal point, and you can go from there. So moving on to our last example. So here we said the value of a share changes from £1.78 to £3.13, find the percentage change. So again, straight away, we can see that it's gone up. So this is our original. 
this is our final and we can see that it's a percentage increase so again there might be a case of where they don't write percentage change they might write the word increase in which all they're wanting is a percentage answer if they write the word change they want they might necessarily be looking for the word of increase or decrease so anyway going back to working this question out so what we've got to do is work out the difference so 3.13 minus 1.78 equals and that gives us £1.35 so plug this into the formula we've got 135 divided by 178 multiplied by 100 which gives us a final answer of 75.8426 uh, rather nine and that continues so round this number up we get 75.8 percent increase to one decimal place